we actually got uh, some crack pack and cheese, and it uh, expired in 2022. And my wife was like, I think it's still good. It's like pear cheese. It can't go bad. Just mix it in. This makes it better. Yeah, best question. All right, so we are on section 5.4. We are skipping 5.3. So if you follow along in your textbook, don't stress about that section. I also don't even know what that section is. So it's partial fraction composition, which is a great tool. It doesn't really apply to anything we're doing, so I don't know why it's in there to begin with. Uh, but it's something we'll use in pre -cal. So if you take pre -cal next or going in, you'll see more partial uh, fraction composition. And what gets real fun about that is depending on how far that you go, you get to roadblocks in it, and then you take another class the next semester to go a little bit further with it, and then hit another roadblock, and then take another class the next semester. I did. The roadblock. Like, there's a block in the road, you can't go for And that's how I said, roadblocks. Roadblocks. Road that's R O A D. You're forgetting the A D. Roadblocks. All right. <laughs> All right, the first objective is just going to be solving uh, by the substitution method. Please email me. Let me help you out. That's, fine. That's what we want to do. Yeah, the third one now. Back to the second one. Go ahead and do it on Sunday. That's what I'm saying. Start it now. Don't wait till Sunday and you're like, oh, I have 80 questions to do. <laughs> yes. There we go. All right, here we go. Let's just start on one. I kind of look at objective one. It looks like part A wants you to graph, so I'm assuming you're probably going to have to do that on the homework. Best way to do that is just solve for Y for both. Uh, this one right here is already solved for Y. How do I solve the second one? Just move over to get Y equals 2X. So you just graph these two. And I'll tell you on my test, I will not require you to graph. I care more about you solving it. Yeah, because it, you would add 2x over it. Move that over. All right, so this one's a lot easier to graph. It's a linear function. Where do I start? Zero. Right, there is no y intercept. And then what's the smoke tell me to do? Well, it takes two dots to make a line. Ish. Um, I always go to the right. So if it's a positive number, I'm going to go up. If it's a negative number, I'm going to go down. And then I always go to the right. And because I know I'm going to the right, it's two. I made it into a fraction. I put it over one. That's why I need to go up two over one. Yeah. All right, once I got that, I'm going to graph the second one. This is a quadratic. So what's the three tell me? Angle up three. Well, I need a different color so we can see the difference. So we'll up three to right here. And then what is a negative x square going to do? It's a downward skew. Uh, if you don't know already, uh, basically if you go down one over one on both sides, and then you can go down two over two. Because two squared is four. No, it'd be down four. Over one. That's it. One, two, three. And then you would go down nine over one, 
16. Over one, and so on and so on, basically squaring the numbers. As long as you have these three points here, you're pretty golden. And I think you're home with that. And you go over one more, and then back to the So then you get a grand point. So here is my question to you. Uh, what makes uh, something have a solution? What has to happen? They cross, they intersect. Now, right now, we can easily see that there's an intersection here. Do you think these guys will eventually cross? Yes, because this is going by steady slope. This one's decreasing pretty rapidly. So we will now have more than just one ordered pair in a nonlinear. Okay. So to actually uh, solve this, uh, since you both have them solved for y, the easiest thing to do next is just simply set them equal to each other. That's right. So negative x squared plus 3 has to equal 2x. Using this information we know now, and again, this is a great review going into our final. How do I solve this? Perfect. So uh, would I want to move the 2x over? I want to move the x squared to avoid the negative. So this becomes positive x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And what I did is I moved the x squared, which gave me positive. I left the 2x there, so it stayed positive. And then I also moved the 3 there, so it became negative. Mm -hmm. And I only did that so I didn't want to have a negative in front. But you can sell it by any method you would like. What would I do now? AC method, so I'm going to try to factor. So it breaks down into two binomials. And try to figure out what multiplies negative 3 as the 2, and that would be 3 and negative 1, right? Now that I need those factors, so I make those zeros, so I get x equals positive 1 and negative 3, right? All right, so those are your x values. But you're looking for an ordered pair as an answer, not just x values. So you take those x values and it it doesn't matter which equation you plug in. You have to plug in to find its corresponding y value. Which one's the easier equation? Y equals 2x. So if I do that, and I take this negative 3 right here, and I plug it in. What's 2 times negative 3? Good. So I get y equals negative 6. So my ordered pair would be negative 3, negative 6, which will be somewhere down here. Take the 1, plug it in. What's 2 times 1? Two, so I get y equals two, so my order pair would be one comma two, which we can actually see physically right there. Yeah, and that's it. Those are your solutions. Yeah. Your homework <laughs> might do this as a set of solutions. Uh, I wouldn't care as much. I'm not good at this. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. All right, that's basically all we're going to do. So let's do that one. Looks like three. Not just three. All right, we go. Uh, example number two. X squared plus Y squared equals 10. And then Y equals the square root of X minus 2. Again, this is why I don't care to graph uh, because this is something you don't know because we actually skipped this section. Uh, but x squared plus y squared, if you ever see something like that, is actually a circle. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you can solve it uh, without using circle technology as well um, by simply just solving for y, and then you would get plus or minus a square root, and it would make a square root here, and then a square root of a negative right underneath it, and it would make a full circle. Yeah. Top one just here. So if we did this, it's, a, it's yeah, it's basically actually two square roots. But remember what a square root looks like. Looks like this. I don't know what kind of. I don't know. Great question. Okay. It's a square root with an x squared in it, so it does kind of make it makes a weird shape. All right, there there is. Just how you gotta do it um, graphically. Again, I wouldn't make you do this on a test, but it might be in your homework. Um, X squared, Y squared, that tells you that you would. Uh, 
keeping his uh, heart zero over zero. Yeah, okay. So typically, uh, so again, we get to do this, and again, I'm not going to expect you to know this, uh, but it's actually x minus h squared plus x minus k squared equals r squared. That's what a circle is. Uh, so your center is actually h comma k. Well, that's yeah. the, center, the center of a circle, so the thing in the middle. Oh, uh, that's our buzzer thing to tell me quiet. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, but because there's no number there that tells me my center is at zero. Because there's no numbers being added or subtracted inside the x squared or y squared, that means the center is zero. And then to figure out the radius, you just take the square root of 10. Yeah, but I think it's done it homework. Square root of 10. It's 3 point something. Yeah, square root of 10 is just 3 point something. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So roughly right past it. That's pretty good. I can actually put it in there. I just need to put it in Okay, so the formula is this guy. Whatever these numbers are, that's your center. So there's no numbers there, so your center is zero, zero. That's important because all you got to do is just the square root of this guy to get your radius. So if my radius is three point something, I just go slightly past three on the top, bottom, left, and right, and then do my best to make a center. Now it could be x minus two squared plus x y squared. Yes, this should be a lot. Gotcha. But yeah, so this could be x plus 2 squared, and this could be just y squared, then your uh, center would be 2 plus 0. Your center. Right. So you just take the square root of whatever that last number is. All right. Not too important there. Then you can grab the square root of x minus 2. If you recall from our parent functions, the square root makes the what kind of sign, the little check mark thing, right? And if I'm minusing 2 on the inside, what direction will I go? To the right. Very good. So you go 2 here. And then I have something that looks something like this. So how many times will I get a solution? Look, you may see right there. And you may find out a big thing of graphing, because it's just really physically hard to graph it. To solve it, so much easier. To so do by the substitution, you already have a y equals. Take that, plug it in. So you get x squared plus the square root of x minus 2 squared mm -hmm. equals 10. Do you remember that that uh go back? We didn't need the square root version. Yes, good. So yes, so you'll see at the square root square root Okay. So this is the part I do kind of expect you to know. To be able to just plug it and then solve if you guys if you guys want to look at this. So then you get x squared plus x minus two equals ten. What did you do next? Good, yes, you want to set equal to zero. So I need to subtract 10, and now I get x squared plus x minus 12. Equal zero. What does it mean? Factor. Are you confused now? Okay, so I already solved for a y, and I just plugged it into the other equation using the substitution method. And after that, I now have an equation with just x. 
So the square root and the square cancel, leaving with us the radic tan, which is x minus 2. I need to set this equal to 0 because it's a quadratic, so I subtracted 10 and got negative 12. And now I'm factoring, so I get positive 4 and negative 3. And then that means that x equals what? That's what I was thinking. I mean, mm -hmm. one doesn't work. No, oh, it doesn't need. So if you take negative 4, and it doesn't matter which equation you plug it into, I put negative 4 into this, what's negative 4 minus 2? Can I take a negative 6? No, so this is not part of my answer. Then I take 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, square root of 1 is, so yeah. that y equals 1, which looks about right. And so therefore my answer here is 3 comma 1. And again, graphically, I see that it's going across once, so that was a little fishy there, which then makes sense when I think of it. Maybe. Sure. Let's move on to addictive two. I think we've done enough there on graphing. So, right purple. No, we got one purple. Objective two. Six minutes. Per question. Solve nonlinear systems. The equations. Yeah. The addition So if you are given 3x squared plus y squared equals 21 and 4x squared minus 2y squared equals negative 2. Now, one thing I do want to caution you on to be able to use an addition method on a nonlinear equation, both equations have to be of the same. They have to have the same terms. So if you see here, they both have x squared, they both have y squared. But if you look at the previous question, they had an x squared, a y squared, and then a square root. Would I be able to use the addition method there? No. They have to have the same terms. Okay? That's what yeah. allows you to just make, mess around with their coefficient and eliminate one of their options. They are. So if you think about it, if you take two circles, I think actually this guy is, actually I think they're both ovals, to be honest with you. But if I take two ovals, how many times do I think it's going to intersect? Twice. You look two circles on top of each other, it's probably going to cross twice. Um, is that what you said? I love that. I heard, I heard once. Maybe it was this. Um, but that doesn't matter on the graphing part. It's literally just asking us to uh, solve it. Um, so let's just do it. What would you do here? Treat it as if it's a regular addition method from the first one. Multiply. Good. You can multiply by two. I like it. To get rid of the y, yes. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, there's a couple things here. If you see patterns, this becomes a little bit easier. I'm just trying to get one of these variables to have the same coefficient with opposite signs. So, here's a negative two. I can easily multiply this guy by two. And then have a positive. If you don't see that, remember the method I taught. You can just take the four, multiply the entire equation up top, take the three, change its sign, multiply everything on bottom so that the x squares will always cancel. If the process you go with, go with that method. If you see the pattern, you can go with this method. Do you go with the pattern or the way at top? And by doing the pattern, it makes you a little bit less work to do. This gives me 6x squared plus... <laughs> Thank you. 2y squared equals 21. This didn't do anything. You're correct. Okay, yeah, we do the three ones in class, and I give you the ones that are super complicated yeah. homework. And on the test, it's even more complicated because then you have to build a rocket in the middle of the test. 
Actually, yes. Okay. So it's just to get one of the letters to have the same number of opposite signs. So when we look at this, we're like, hey, this has this a coefficient of one. It'd be super easy to multiply that by two and make it opposite and negative. Again, if you don't see that, you're more likely to take the four, multiply the thing, change the sign of the three, so that I multiply the thing by negative three. And what that will do, it will eliminate that first term. And then you'll be able to start from the last square. Regardless of the process you go with, you'll still end up with the same answer. So there's many ways to answer that question. Good job. All right, so we're going to do that. Four or six x squared plus four x squared gives me good. two y squared minus two y squared go away. 42 minus two is 40. Then I'm going to do what? Divide by 10, so I get x squared equals four. Then what? Good. Square root of so x equals positive or negative 2. Don't forget when you take the square root of something, there's a plus or minus in front of it. So therefore, I technically have two answers. I have x equals negative 2 and I have x equals 2. It doesn't matter which equation you plug it into. You need to plug it into the new equation if you like. We need to go find the y value. What's your proof? The new one? I wouldn't tell you. I would just tell you it's 40 plus 40. So you can use any equation except this guy. <laughs> Which one? Here's another. First one? That's good. I would suggest the one with lower numbers. So that gives me 3 times negative 2 squared plus y squared equals 21. And we can tell that. It's super monotone. I've had professors like that. I'm on. Okay. It would be a very good observation. Yeah, so I can just do this once and then I have a y value for both. Okay, so what you just noticed is, is regardless if I plug in negative 2 or 2, it's going to give me the same value, so I'll get the same y value for both x's. Okay, anyways, uh, so I get 3 times 4. Are you finished? Well, let me get it to you. That's 12, 9, Ooh, I got plus or minus 3. That's a good question. I have a circle. I have another circle. <laughs> Ooh, kind of circle. And this is, but this is nice for the graph. So it's like this, and then like this. Uh, that's exactly what's going on. So you actually have now negative two comma three. Negative two comma negative three, two comma three, and two comma negative three. So yes, you actually have four times it crosses. Very good. That's nice. In my head, that's what I'm looking at. But you're right. It could be easy. A circle and then an oval. Yeah. No. <laughs> Gotta love it. The end of the semester. This is where we get into the nitty gritty to get you ready for that college pre count. Trigonometry is actually next. But you can take the statistics. Is that kinesiology? I don't know. It's a science, ain't it? Kinesiology? Yeah. I think you have to take a minimum of like 16 hours, don't you? Or 12 hours or something? Wouldn't I do the ones you left? Like, just like the overview of your Yes. Yeah. It would just take so many hours you need, because then you could probably just pick another random math, and depending on how many random maths you would take, if it's just six hours you need, I'd take a statistics course, because that's something that you can use in the real world. If it's like 12 hours you need, I don't know, I'd probably go the statistics, trigonometry, pre-calc kind of direction, uh, but really just... No, don't 
think the next one after this towards the STEM section would either be statistics, trigonometry. I would do trigonometry before pre count because pre count is trigonometry heavy in college, where in, in high school we, get, we teach the trigonometry in pre count. But there they already expect you to know it so that you can apply it. So I would recommend that you take trigonometry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the yeah. If you would have actually had your trigonometry last year with your pre cal, then yeah, you'd probably go right there. But you need to know all your properties because they expect you to memorize it. Especially the unit circle. They expect you to have that memorized. In, in college, the trigonometry class will help you memorize that. That's really what a hypothesis is. Yeah. And then if you wanted to, calculus. It really depends on your major. So if you like U of H, they don't consider any of those maths until you take calculus one. That's the freshman course. So my college algebra, my trigonometry, and my pre cal all ended up being elective classes. They took the nice maths math, they took them as an elective. So I went to U of H in calculus two, so I was a junior still taking freshman courses. Yeah. Yeah, let's just see the curriculum is. All right, let's do more. Yes, it's over. No, no, you, I mean, yeah. Calculus one is easier than pre cal. It is. The issue is, is pre cal tries to give you a complete overview of count one, two, and three. So it's a, it tries to show you all of it. But then when you take calculus one, it's just like this portion of count pre cal, then count two is. And really, true, the count two is probably the worst of all of them. You can test any calculus and avoid pre cal. Here's my recommendation I graduated from Cleveland High School. And I was not confident in my math foundation, even though I'm really good at math. I wasn't confident that they taught me what I was supposed to know. So I, I tested in the calculus one, but I purposely took college algebra, trigonometry, and pre cal. So I knew I would know this stuff before I went into calculus one. I could have probably survived calculus one, but I wouldn't have made an easy A like I did when I took it by taking three courses before. I would have probably struggled to kind of maintain C or B because I'm like, I didn't know where A is. My teacher didn't teach me the circle and all this blah, blah, blah stuff. So that's my recommendation. I mean, if you're like confident, you're like up there, go into calculus one. Don't waste your time on these selective classes. But that's, that's just what I did. That's me. That doesn't work for everybody. I just I have a strong foundation. And I literally made an easy A in college algebra, an easy A in math. I made an A in trigonometry. <laughs> it wasn't easy, but that was a year it snowed or something. That was what year was that? Well, no, well, she still oh, had class. And you, as we couldn't even make it to campus, she was like, if you don't make it, get the notes to somebody else. Like, and I'm like, the rules are ice. So we're like risking our lives to get there. And I'm like, no. So that was that, that was 2011. So that would have been that February 2011. Anyways, that was made it hard because I missed the very important practice thing that I had to go teach myself. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you get to my oh I know I actually did walk up the hill in the snow to get to school. But I didn't just did that. I actually slipped and fell and rolled off the major highway to not get ran over. Yeah. And I say a hill, it was probably like seven feet tall. It wasn't that big of a hill. I was just crossing the street to the school. But it was snow. And I did slip and fall. <laughs> and I heard an old lady go. <laughs> and then I get to the school. The teacher that was waiting for the car ride along was like, "Hey, you really made it there. You watched <laughs> the license plate." Like, uh, so you see my issue with my foundation. All right, <laughs> sorry. So four x squared equals four minus y squared. Uh, sixteen y squared equals one forty four plus nine x. So what makes this great is this is my life story. You can record it and put it on YouTube. All right. Um, so before, so before I can actually 
actually um, used the addition by what I need to do. And you might have seen this on your homework, but I got a little confused as well. I need to go ahead. Before I can do the elimination method, what should I do? I wouldn't divide. Yes, put it in a standard form so everything lines up. I don't think we got to do any of those on the homework or in the class, but I bet there was one on the homework. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to restructure this so it's in a more standard form. So I'm going to say this is 4x squared. Add the y squared over equals 4. And then I'm going to subtract the 9x squared over plus the 16y squared and leave the 144. And you could have moved the y squared over and moved the 144 if you wanted to. But the goal is to line these up so that when you add them, you combine correctly. You cannot add y squares on the opposite side of the equal sign. They have to be on the same side. So what do I do in this situation? It is a linear process. It's either I multiply this by negative 16 or multiply this by 9 and 4. Yeah, let me look at that. I would say 16 is probably the easiest one. Yeah, negative 16, sorry. Yes, negative 16. The, the other alternative way would be 9 and Make that positive for the very opposite signs. All right, so when I do that, 64. I did it. 4 times 10 is 40 plus 24 is 64. I did, I did two seconds to do it. That is faster for me. I mean, that's, that's 4 times 16 is negative 64. They're going to just move my 16s by heart. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, so there's a couple of ways we could have done this. We decided to go negative 16 to get rid of the list, but we could have easily multiplied this by 9, this by 4. I don't think, I think both ways are turning with number wise. Keeping it, yes. Organization is, yes. Organization is big on this. Is that 80? They have 65 plus 80. Okay. Oh, this is not nice. Mm, this is actually kind of cool. What are the next? All right, so you get x squared equals 80 over negative 73. What would you know? Square root it, but can I take square root of the negative number? No. So are there any x values? No. no. So this is actually a no solution. So the most likely is happening here is you probably have something here and then some over here where they actually don't intersect. I think uh, your homework might ask you to do an empty set. Uh, they could also ask. Uh, those no solutions would be inconsistent. So, I mean, I really don't know. I know they're going to be circles or ovals, uh, so they're just going to be where they're not intersecting. You know? I don't know where they're actually located, but something like that. Okay, let's do that. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the last objective, which is, of course, applications, which is y'all's favorite. Objective three. I lost myself there. Use non linear systems to solve applications. I would be able to have a side this bit soon and still like be faster than I normally. So there's only one more problem to do, so literally after this, I literally have nothing else, so I can take uh, questions you have. Um, here's the kind of questions you can probably see on your uh, homework. 
Okay. It says an electronic sign for a grocery store is in the shape of the rectangle. The side is a rectangle. The perimeter of this sign is 72 feet. And the area of this sign is 320 feet squared. It wants you to find the length and width. I feel like this is like asking one question. Anyways, uh, what's the perimeter of the rectangle? At this point, we should have that one last. Good. Two links plus two widths. If you need to, just draw a rectangle. Link, link, width, width. L plus W plus L plus W gets down to 2L two two plus 2W. What's the area of the rectangle? Link times width. So I've got information. I now have others that I can solve. So I'm just going to plug in what I know. I know 72 equals 2L plus 2W and 320 equals length times width. I would recommend, oh, well, I'll just ask you this. Can I use the distance and elimination method on this one? Why not? I think it was. Why can't I? So we don't have length here. That's what you mean. Yep. This right here is the snail. This guy's just a W, and this is an L times W, making this its own term. So I do not have like terms. So the only method I can use is what? Substitution. It doesn't matter which approach you go to, what equation, and what letter you want to solve for. Pick bomb L. So to solve for L on the bottom, what do I do? Just divide by W is the absolute multiplication. So 320 divided by W equals L. And then back substitute that into the equation that you did not choose. So I now get 72 equals 2. Times 320 over W plus 2W. What's your next? You could technically, yeah. I could divide. If I divide by two, I have to divide every term by two. It does. It actually works out on this one. So that's 36 uh, equals 320 over W plus T. Not, not T, W. <laughs> what would I do now? I wouldn't do times by 320 now. Good, yes. I would multiply by the W on the bottom so I can get rid of the fractions. All right, this is a rational equation now. And then I win. So, yeah, I get 36W equals 320 because this W would cancel plus W squared. Sounds good. So now I'm going to do W squared minus 36W plus 320. Zero. All I do is move this guy over and then rewrite it in standard form. Look good here? All right, that way. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, 20 times 4. No. Well, it's got, no, they're both going to be negative, so it doesn't matter. So it would be, they're both going to have to be negative. I'm multiplying to a positive, and you're adding to a negative. So that would mean 36, or 35 and 1, 32, 64, 33, and 99, 32, and 4. Not 
180 and 6, 180. 16 and 20. Would that would work? Yes. So now we get W equals 16 and W equals 20. Ooh, this gets interesting. Oh, but it doesn't matter. You just need to rectangle. Yeah. So you get the width of 16. So the width of 16, what's the length? So go in here, you get uh, 320 divided by 16, where well, you get 20. But if the width is 20, what's the length? 16. So you have your two answers there. So it's either a 16 by 20, or it's a 20 by 16. Huh? The fence not this. The fence, so the, the, so the sign could be this guy, or the sign could be like this. Well, they don't tell us the orientation of the sign. So the sign, and then that this then now becomes the length, and these become the width. What happened is, is what happened was is somebody had to deal with this problem for so long before they realized to do this math. They're like. We're making kids do this, so we didn't go through it. Right? And that's literally all I have for today. That was a good lecture, guys. Yes, bathroom, that's fine.